Electric vehicles are taking over the streets. The world is changing and Formula E is at the cutting edge. Bringing all electric, single seater racing to the streets of your cities at speeds of 280 kilometers per hour. With the closest racing action anywhere in the world. This season, the bar has been raised. With new features, new tracks, and new cars. And the drivers have risen to the challenge. This is ABB Formula E, and it's time for round nine of the championship. Monte Carlo, Monaco. The home of high rollers and high speed. The stakes in this season's title charge have never been higher. Oh, oh. In contact. Oh, that was a mad move! As the race for the championship intensifies, do you roll the dice and take a chance? Risk a spin and bust? I've just got taken out. Another race. Or do you play it safe, stick, and take the points? We did it, baby. Oh, first, yes! <laughs> With eight different winners from eight different races, who will take this prestigious jewel in the Formula E crown? Hey Street Racers, how's it going? We're here in my hometown of Monaco for round nine of the ABB FIA Formula E Championship. And this week, the show is mine. We've got loads to get through, so let's check to see what we've got coming up. The Evans brothers, Mitch and Simon, take us for a spin through the iconic Monte Carlo rally stage the Col de Torini. Then we'll see how Simon gets on in round seven of the inaugural Jaguar I-Pace E-Trophy Championship, where yet again, there was plenty of paint exchanged. We'll catch up with season three champion and Monaco local, Lucas Degrassi. Plus, of course, we'll have all the best bumps, bangs, scrapes, passes, and incredible action from the legendary streets of Monaco for round nine of the series. But first, let's get the inside scoop on the most famous street circuit in the world from four-time IndyCar Series champ and Formula E commentator, Dario Franchitti. Hi, street racers. Welcome to Formula E from Monaco. The traffic's always a problem here, but let's go and take a lap of this 1.76 kilometer 12 turn track. And it features some of those iconic Monaco turns you've heard so much about. Well, it's definitely a high uh, energy input into the tire on this track, which is related to the fast corners and the high grip you have here. Right here, we have the, the first braking into turn one. It's definitely stressful for the brakes. Then down into turn three, we have the same thing, a uh, hard braking straight line. We just arrived in, in turn three and there's this very grippy um, yeah, tarmac, so I'm pretty sure that it's going to affect the, the tyres. Just as you turn in and you get to the apex though, it changes back to traditional tarmac. There's going to be a massive difference in grip level the driver's going to feel between braking, turning in, and then it's, the grip is going to switch off right about here. It's going to make things very, very difficult for the drivers. The track itself it's for us in Formula E probably one of the best. It's in such a good state, you know. You, we run the grooved Michelin tires and they actually don't like temperature a lot. So there's a big game on how to keep the tires cool and the tire pressure is low and all that. But yeah, some driving techniques that I don't want to say too much about. The attack mode activation zone is on driver's left, halfway between turn four and the back corner. Now, unusually, the drivers will not lose any time going into the tight mode activation zone, but they will still get that lovely 25 kilowatt boost in power. We've made it to the entrance of the swimming pool complex. It's very wide by Formula E standards, but the drivers have to be inch perfect because this is a fast sequence of corners. And if you get slightly offline, the old barrier is waiting to meet you. Especially the swimming pool section and the back corner will be will be really challenging. You know, they're actually high speed and, and we've not really had across the season so far. So it will change the setup a little bit of the car and obviously for the drivers as well it will be an extra challenge. These quick chicanes and direction chains are, are quite difficult to tackle. Like you need to, to give the car a bit of time to settle. And it's easy to make a mistake and, and lose the rear. 
we've exited Rascas, up a slight incline, and then, unusually for the Monaco circuit, we've got some surface changes right at apex. The track drops off on exit, and there's that iconic shot of the back of the car sliding as the curb catches it, and hopefully stopping you running into the wall on exit. Good exit's important here because this is a long straight that follows on to the finish line. Well, that's a lap of the 12-turn, 1.7-kilometre Formula E circuit around the streets of Monaco. We'll see how the drivers get on later in the show. It's been a hectic season so far in Formula E, with some of the most unpredictable racing the world has ever seen. We've had eight winners from eight races, so let's take a dive into the numbers and have a look at how the championship has played out so far. Current Drivers' Championship leader Robin Freins has had a turbulent season, with some strong performances punctuated by non-point scoring finishes. Robin Freins wins in Paris! Degrassi sent spinning. Price was hit into him by Boemi. In contrast, third place Antonio Felix da Costa has had almost the opposite season so far, scoring points when Robin hasn't and dropping points when Robin has looked strong. And it's victory for da Costa and BMW. Da Costa's in the wall and the lead is gone. Reigning champion John Eric Verne's season shows us just how competitive the racing has been. A few strong finishes, including his win in Sanya, puts him in the title fight in sixth place. Jeff's teammate Andre Lauderer currently sits in second despite not yet having won a race, making it clear that to have a chance in Formula E, consistency is key. Looking at the overall points tally, you can see how Lotterer's consistency has paid off with his points tally climbing steadily. Our host, Mitch Evans, has also been a steady climber, scoring points in every round, culminating his fantastic win in Rome before dropping out of the points for the first time in Paris. After showing promise in the first half of the season, round three winner Sam Bird and round five winner Eduardo Mortara haven't scored since Edo took the top step in Hong Kong. As the drivers get 25 points for a race win, three points for pole position, and one point for fastest lap, in theory, there's a maximum of 29 points available in each race. This means that coming into round nine here in Monaco, any of the top 10 drivers could finish the race in the lead of the championship. It really is that close. The tiny country of Monaco is famous as a playground for the rich and famous, but behind the glitz and glamour, it has a problem. With 100,000 cars commuting daily in and out of the principality, road transport is one of the biggest contributors to its current rating of high air pollution. But the government is trying to help by encouraging the use of electric vehicles with subsidies, free charging stations, and free parking. Held annually since 2005, Ever Monaco is a conference and exhibition promoting electric vehicles and renewable energy, showcasing some of the newest tech available that will help in the fight against climate change. And where better for electric boat builder Vita to launch the first network of powerboat superchargers than the Yacht Club de Monaco. Vita was founded three years ago originally with me wanting to buy, buy an electric boat, not being able to find one. So I built this boat down here to start with. We then face the inevitable issue that you have with an electric boat, which is how far can you go. That's where Vita Superpower came in to extend the range of electric boats. We'll install maybe seven or eight superchargers along the French Riviera to ensure that anyone can go up and down an electric boat. The marine industry is responsible for vast amounts of pollution. They use eight times the power of a car. So you have eight times the pollution. For me, that's a big thing to try and change. And if I can change it one boat at a time, I'd be super happy. Hey, g'day guys. Welcome to my home here in Monaco. My brother Simon just arrived, so come on in and I'll uh introduce you. For our host Mitch Evans, racing cars professionally runs in the family. Big Brother Simon is currently driving in Formula E's support series, the Jaguar I-Pace E-Trophy. Simon Evans about to make history. It's the checker flag and the win for Simon Evans. Obviously you started the season off well in Saudi with the win. You're still in the championship hunt. Um, how have you found it so far? Yeah, it's been um, really competitive. 
Um, qualifying has been a real important bit. Um, I've, I've actually qualified in the top three every race apart from the last one where four races to go. I know I've got the speed and, and that and I think we hopefully should be uh, there hopefully fighting for the title at the last race. Mitch Evans through the final corner to win the Romy Prix for Jaguar. Uh, I imagine Rome's still firmly set in the mind. Yeah, I mean, it was good timing for us to get that win. For me and the team, lifted up everyone's spirits in the team and gave everyone a lot of confidence. So, you know, now it's time's passed and we need to try and repeat it now. Do you remember um, that time where you missed that attack mode in Rome? Yeah, I do. Thanks for reminding me. Yes, he's, he's missed, missed it. it. He's missed attack mode. Stressful moment, but added a bit more sweetness to the, to the victory as well um, to overcome that. To witness it was really cool. You know, everyone was on the same wavelength. It was really cool just to be with a whole lot of people from JAG. Yeah, it's all, we're all part the same. of the same family. Yeah, exactly. Do you remember watching Monaco Grand Prix? Yeah, obviously, as you know, like back home, always have to get up in the middle of the night to watch the yeah. Grand Prix. Had no idea that in a few years' time I was going to be racing up here. I remember beating you on PlayStation. Or... I can't remember that. <laughs> Before the brothers got down to business on the streets of Monaco, Simon decided to give his little bro a taste of what the Jaguar I-Pace can do on the most famous stage of the Monte Carlo Rally, the Col de Torini. The rally has been running since 1911, and this section of mountain pass is famed for its twisty, steep, and sometimes treacherous icy conditions. The Jaguar I-Pace E-Trophy is Formula E's official support series, where a fleet of 12 identical race-spec I-Pace cars race on the same circuits as Formula E by both amateurs and professionals. In the Pro Series, it's been an exciting season so far, with Brian Sellers currently leading the championship after two wins in Hong Kong and Paris. Simon Evans sits in third place with one win under his belt. On the grid here in Monaco, Brazilian Kaka Bueno took pole position with compatriot Sergio Jimenez alongside. Simon Evans has his work cut out as he starts in sixth. Racing in Monaco is underway. And it's a pretty decent start for Rezinski. Brian Sellers was a little slow off the line. Crunching each other into turn one. Sellers holds the place, bangs further back. Sellers, his leg is in the wall. Leg spun around, she's in the wall, radzinski has been hit, it's over for Leg. Red flags. Here they come then, safety car comes in, Brian Sellers is quite a long way back from the two Brazilians in front, and that's going to be a comfortable restart for Bueno and Jimenez. So Bueno in first, then Jimenez, Sellers, Zhang and Evans now in fifth. There goes Simon Evans past Yachi Zhang. Simon Evans is two tenths quicker than the race leaders through the first sector in the 99 car. There he comes. Cacabueno out of the final corner and he's going to be a winner for the second time in Monaco in the Jaguar I-Pace E-Trophy Series. He goes for a photo finish across the line with Sergio Jimenez. That win for Kaka Bueno in the Pro Series moves him up to fourth place. Simon Evans holds on to third position, and Sergio Jimenez closes the gap to one point for the top spot, which is still held by Brian Sellers by the finest of margins. All to play for in the final two races. What a great first season of racing. Monaco is a special place to race, you know, and my first time here and win the race. Oh, so I'm, I'm so happy, I'm so happy. Yeah, it's pretty surreal, you know, going out for that very first lap, like, you know, watching it your whole life growing up. So to actually, you know, drive it and, and see how tight it is in person it was really, really cool. Berlin's up next. Then we go to a double header in New York, which I'm really excited about. Um, I'm not giving up. I'm gonna, I want to be in this championship fight right to the end. So um, bring it on.
Along with Brazil, Monaco is where I call home. A city built for street racing. It's a magical place to drive. But now there is a new race. One towards a greener future. And Formula E is leading the charge. I'm Lucas Di Grassi and I'm a driver for Audi Sport and Clean Air Ambassador for the United Nations Environment Programme. It would mean the world to me to win here in Monaco on these iconic streets. Fortune, I'm sure, will favor the brave. So currently I'm a UN ambassador for clean air. There's a lot of talk, a lot of media about climate change, but in the shorter term, air pollution is by far deadlier than anything else that we're encountering at the moment. I am passionate about saving the planet, but I think it's a civil duty of everyone using their knowledge and their know-how to improve society in the areas that they are performing best. And we are doing exactly that with Formula E. Through electric technology, we are sending a message of driving electric vehicles and, and clean mobility and new mobility. And at the same time, we'll make it cheaper and more accessible. So it's a win-win situation. Here comes Degrassi, and he did it! Good move from Lucas Degrassi. I had an amazing year so far. I had a difficult beginning, but then I won in Mexico. Push, 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 yes! yes. Degrassi wins! Second place in Hong Kong. I'm chasing my second world title in Formula E. The championship cannot be closer than this year. We had eight races, eight different winners. The championship will be decided on the wire in New York, for sure. In Monaco, I've done two podiums in two races, but never won. So, of course, we're going to push very hard to try this first victory. It's an iconic race, fantastic racetrack, and I'm really looking forward for the race. Well, let's find out how Lucas gets on, as it's time to see what went down on the legendary street circuit around the famous harbor front. Hey guys, so we're down here in, in P12, uh, the start of the, the Monaco E Prix. Should be in P2, but I got a 10 place group penalty. So uh, yeah, I'm seriously gutted. We're looking pretty strong after a strong quality. That's what you aim for and work so hard for. But we'll try and obviously move forward and, and, and finish in the points. Well, that penalty for a technical infringement means Mitch will have a fight on his hands. But in Formula E, anything can happen. Bring your check from this on Mitch. Not in clear. Pole position on the left-hand side. It is Jean-Éric Verne. Alongside him on the front row, Pascal Wehrlein. Alongside him is Oliver Rowland. All five lights are on, and we go green in Monaco. Good start from Verne. Decent start from Rowland as he tries to get up the inside. Then they'll start cascading down the hill towards the hairpin right-hander, and Rowland is under a bit of pressure here. Buemi goes to the inside, it's three wide. Buemi very sensibly gets out of it. Felipe Massa trying to get around the outside. Everybody safely through, but Jean-Eric Verne leads. Verline second, Rowland third, fourth is Massa, fifth is Buemi, sixth is Alexander Sims, so no change. Jean-Eric Verne leading, Pascal Verline in second place. Oh, lock up from Verline, he's thrown it away. Verlaine goes straight on at Sandabot and up into second place now goes Oliver Rowland. Felipe Massa goes past him as well. Sebastian Buemi is going to try and get the dummy, but he can't quite get it done. Verne leads, Rowland second, Massa third now. And Massa's in podium position at the moment. That will be very popular here in Monaco. Mitch Evans has moved up to 11th place now. Oh, that's wide from Alexander Sims. Little bit of a mistake, and Lin is right on the back of him. Here comes the Jaguar. It was a BMW around the outside, Da Costa, right oh, round. Oh, what a move oh, from Da Costa! I'm lifting too much, trying to swim pole, and Da Grassi's having a look. Great move by Da Grassi, past Evans. That's an aggressive move from Stoffel van Dorn to try and uh, get around the outside there of Alex Linden up into eighth place. Doesn't quite work out. That could put him under pressure from behind. And Sam Bird looks to the inside. Lucas de Grassi's in there as well. And Bird's got past de Grassi then in all of that melee and up into 10th place. 
Oh, here comes the, the, the Virgin car. Super from late from Bird up the inside of Stoffel Van Dorn, and that's ninth place now. Bird has these races, doesn't he, where he is just on a mission. And that is what he is doing now. Van Dorn is getting held up here. Degrassi is going to try and go around the outside. Is this going to be into the he's wall? No, it. he's done it. What a move from Lucas Degrassi. So Van Dorn now slips down to 11th. Bird again. Bird again, this time scything up the inside of his former teammate Alex Lin and up into eighth place. He wasn't even on attack mode and there to the outside on attack mode goes Lucas Degrassi. Is this one going to work out for him as well? Yes. Lin's going to push him. He's done it twice now, Lucas Degrassi. As much as we can, stick to the target, capitalize on any opportunities. Uh, they get a five second power boost to 250 kilowatts side by side. Van Dorn trying to get past Lin and back him into 10th place. And he's in it. front. Yeah. And now Freins goes for Lin, not into Tabak. Oh, into Tabak. Through he goes. Bold stuff from Robin Freins. And Lin loses out as well to his teammate Mitch Evans. No. Oh, there she goes. As they come down into the hairpin again. Oh, round oh. the outside. Slam. Slam, bam. And that's Degrassi out. What happened there? It looked it... like Sims cuts across. I don't know if Sims got hit. Sims goes to activation oh, zone. Degrassi's car is in all kinds of trouble. Yeah, the race is over for Left Degrassi. Front suspension damage. There's a look. Through goes Mitch Evans, and that is him into ninth place now past Stoffel Van Dorn. Oh, we've got oh. a collision. Robin Franks. Oliver, big Alexander big Sims. Damage. Yeah, Franks is out. Ah, oh, that's going to be. Leader. Evans looking down the inside of Sims, and he's through. P8, P8. Well done, mate. Well done. Surely that's it now for jean Eric Van. There's no more overtaking opportunities. Evans has got him into sixth place past Sam Bird. A couple more corners. But Massa's Roland. only got 1% left, Jack. Massa's on 1% of usable energy. You're right, Dario. Massa might not make it to the end of the e -Prix. Vern's on 1% as well. Towards the final corner they come. Crunching into the back. Verline goes for it, he can't do it. Vern comes out of the final corner. The streak is over. Vern wins for the second time this season in Formula E. Oh, God, that feels good. I like it. That flawless drive from Jeff saw him lead from start to finish, holding off the chasing cars behind him to become the first driver to score a second win of the season, jumping him to the top of the standings. But it's still incredibly tight as he leads by just one point over teammate Andre Lauterer, who once again finished in the points with a seventh place finish. After crashing out, Robin Freins drops down to third, another five points back. And for our host Mitch, he drove superbly, battling his way through the field to score eight points, which sees him move up to sixth place overall. Hey Street Racers, so we've just finished the Monaco e -Prix and we've come across the line in six, obviously sliding down in 12th after the penalty. Um, it was a bit of a crazy, hectic race, a um, lot of carnage, a lot of excitement. Dropped back, then I, I managed to make my way forward um, towards the end of the race, and I guess to finish six, get some solid points after the disappointment after qualifying was, was, um, was what we needed and it was the aim, so it was nice to tick that off. And uh, hopefully, you know, we can uh, get that front row, it may be even better. Come, come Berlin in a couple weeks, so we'll see you then. In the team standings, DS to Cheetah shoot into quite a big lead. With Jev and Andre sitting in the top two in the Drivers' Championship, they now have a 38-point lead over Envision Virgin Racing in second, with reigning team champions Audi Sports sitting in third. We're almost out of time, but before we go, let's take a look at the very best of the online social offerings. Race winner jean eric Vern posted this pic thanking 2016 F1 world champion Nico Rosberg for the tips on the Monaco street circuit. Daniel Abt posted this throwback to five years ago on his first day in Formula E. Formula E posted these shots of Jeb and teammate Andre Lotterer as babies. Cute, right? And finally, Formula E sponsor ABB posted this video of Sebastian Buemi driving the Formula E car around Bern ahead of the first ever race in the Swiss capital on June 22nd. But before we head to Switzerland though, we're heading to Berlin for round 10 of the championship. See you there, street racers.